This is the third segment of the plate tectonic chapter in historical geology. Uh, the last segment, the second one, I stopped at the hot spot. I already kind of explained it to you that you're going to end up with a chain of volcanoes, but only the, the one which is above the hot spot at the time is active. All the other ones are not. Um, this picture shows you uh, hot spot locations on Earth. And one of the interesting one is that, you know, we have a hotspot under Yellowstone. And as that hotspot melts through the continental crust, that volcano, we learned a whole lot in physical geology about, as it melts through the continent, the magma is becoming extremely felsic and extremely explosive. So Yellowstone produces the, the biggest volcanoes. Uh, and we call it super volcano. And you know that in the last 2.1 million years, it produced three extreme volcanoes. One 2.1 billion million years ago, uh, 1.2 million years ago, and 600,000 years ago. So some people think that it's overdue. And it produced a whole huge caldera, which is like 40 miles wide. And so we have ideas how much... Um, how much volcanic ash and pyroclast can it produce, which could be devastating for the U.S. This picture shows you the, the chain of volcanoes along the Hawaiian hotspot, which is in the middle, right here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And these are the last one, two, two three, four, for last four or five volcanoes. But if you go back in time, you can actually see that this hotspot produced all these volcanoes. And now it's going under right here. And it goes up to like 65 million years for the last ones which are still on the plate. So those are extinct volcanoes. The, the only one which is um, active is right below the uh, big island of Hawaii, uh, all the others are extinct volcanoes. And this actually, this, uh, the way it shows on the map is also show you the way the, the everything is moving around. So it kind of tells you how the plate have moved through time. It's very interesting. So again, we're back with the age of the oceanic crust. So now it clearly shows the different plate tectonic settings that we went through all of them. You can kind of see that the Atlantic Ocean is growing. There is no subduction going on. So these guys are all passive margins right here. Passive, passive. The Pacific Ocean is shrinking on every side. So it's all convergent plate boundary. On this side, it's mostly oceanic, oceanic. On this side, it's mostly oceanic continental except right here where the mid-oceanic ridge is going under North America. There is something here too because these areas, see the blue is right here, but then you have younger oceanic crust here. So there, there might be some extension going on right here. So if you look at the whole situation, the, the ages of the oceanic crust really showing you what's going on in terms of plate tectonics on the Earth. Now, when you play this slideshow, this is really cool. It shows you the so-called Wilson cycle. The Wilson cycle is, is what we call the, the supercontinent cycle. The supercontinent cycle's duration is about three to 350 million years. And every three to 350 million years, all the continents get together, making the so-called supercontinent. And then it starts breaking apart, the continents moving apart from each other and then they're getting back together again. So this is what we call Wilson or supercontinent cycle. And as you know, the last supercontinent was Pangaea. But if you, if you look at the Earth age, 4.6 billion, and let's say the, the first one, the first uh, continents were like about 3.8 billion. So 4.6 minus 3 is 1.6. But so it's about... Oh, 4.6 minus. I cannot calculate for some stupid reason. We have had about eight supercontinent cycles since the Earth, uh, the first continents have formed. So we have, a, have had about eight of them. But really, 
the the information we have we gathered from geologists possibly the most we got is about the last two we have some information like two before that but before those it's all kind of gone like it's metamorphosed so many times that there is just no way that we can get that much information out so we do know that this happening but what we really know the most about is the last two Rodinia and Pangaea and this slide which is basically the last slide is showing you the Wilson cycle this is the JME slide here is the supercontinent it breaks apart you have smaller continents and then starts the subduction and uh, oceanic, 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 continental plate boundary and then continent, continent and you got the new supercontinent again. So this is the so-called Wilson cycle. Oh, one more thing. When you have continent, continent plate boundary and mountain formation, we call that orogeny. Actually, orogeny is every convergent plate. Whenever you have mountain formation, we call it orogeny, so remember that word, orogeny, orogeny, because you will have to know a whole lot of those orogenies which has happened throughout the Earth history. Oh, actually, I forgot. I still have a couple of, oh, actually, the orogen is right here. So orogeny is the intensive episode of very intensive rock deformation or mountain building. It's mostly or during oceanic continental continent continent plate boundaries whenever you have mountain formation and this slide is actually very important it's about the different subsidence because after all when you look at the ocean and you see what kind of sediments are in the ocean uh, the fact that we have those basins in the ocean is the result of the possible subsidence and we have different, different kinds of subsidence. Uh, the first one is the subduction subsidence. When you have the subduction, actually it really pushes everything down and it makes the big deep trench and all those sedimentary basins around it. So that's the subduction uh, subsidence. It will produce forcible depression of one lithosphere plate as it's subducting beneath the other one. And... Um, so that's why we have the formation of the trench, which is basically a lot of space for sediment to settle in. Then you got the thermal or cooling subsidence. When the oceanic crust forms, it's really, really hot. So um, when it cools down, it actually it shrinks and becoming more dense. So it will go down, uh, providing more space for the new sediment to settle on top of it. Uh, the next one is the sediment loading subsidence. It's like when you have a car and you have five or six, seven people going into that car, you know, it goes down. So when you have a oceanic environment and a lot of sediment being deposited in, you know, the whole area is going down. So it provides more room for the sediment to come. So that's the sediment loading. And then you got the trust loading. When you have a trust fault and a whole slab is coming over on top of something else you know that will push because of the weight it will push the whole crust down so it will provide more uh, room for other sediments to settle down so these are the different types of subsidences and uh, the providing room for new sediment and the very last slide on this uh, slideshow is the different sedimentary basins and the type of sediment in them. So we have, I listed the trench, for arc, back arc, intracratonic is like when you have a sedimentary basin on the craton, which is like basically the continent, and then the passive margin environment and the rift environment. So I kind of want you to do, know these different basins, what kind of sediments and what kind of depositional environments are uh, characteristic to those. So if I ask you about these, you should know it. What is characteristic in the forearc, what is characteristic in the back arc basin, the passive margin, and the reef basins. So this is the end of the plate tectonic chapter and I hope you understand it, but if you have any questions just ask me.
during the lab or you can text me remember all that good stuff so bye for now